Bonjour à tous, hello everyone, how are you doing? So, with spring in full swing and summer is on the horizon, I'm receiving a lot of requests about travel trip to Iceland. Now, I have been to Iceland for almost two months, over three trips, so I have a very good idea of what can be done and how this can be done. Now, first question is why are you going to Iceland? Are you going to Iceland to take picture like this? Or this? Or this? Then you are in the right place. But if you are going to Iceland for pure pleasure, this is probably not the tips for you. Because what I'm going to explain is going to be anything but a real pleasure trip. Now, there are a lot of things to cover. So I will have my notes and I will look at it time to time. With all that said, let's begin. Now the first thing is when to get there. Now it depends a little bit on what you are trying to do. Now if you are going there to photograph the landscape and not really the northern light, I would say the summer solstice is probably the best time, kind of mid of June. The three hours of golden light is amazingly beautiful. And if you can find the light, it is going to be a spectacular show. And if you are going there for the northern light, the best time to visit that is in winter. But to be honest, at this point of time, it's probably not the best time to photograph the northern light. The best time to photograph the northern light will be somewhere in 2025, in the peak of the solar activity. But still, for the northern light, the winter is better. With a larger amount of dark time, you will get more chances to photograph the northern light. A lot of people say that go to Iceland during autumn. I kind of disagree to that one. The reason behind is that Iceland doesn't have that many trees or that many greeneries or that many like forest lines. So there is not much things to really capture from color and, and autumn vista point of view. If you really want those type of situation, if you want the autumn color, rather go to the, to the Alps in Switzerland, Italy or France, you will probably get much more benefit from your photo trip. Now that we know when to go to Iceland, let's talk about weather, which is a very important aspect for landscape and nature photography. Now, you have probably seen hundreds of pictures of Iceland like this, or this, or this, and you feel that you will just go there, click the shutter, and get the light and get that picture. Wrong. Iceland has an extremely horrible weather pattern. Summer or not, the max probably you can get is a cloudy day and the worst could be that it's raining and extremely windy and all this kind of stuff. Very negative, right? Not really. There is a trick to get the best light. And if you follow along, I'm going to guide you with that one. Now, even though in the map Iceland looks smaller, it is not that much of a small country and it has a very local weather pattern. So if you can follow the light, there is a big chance that you will get to the place where the best light is. Now they have this website called vedur.ch. I will put the link of it in the description below. That is normally pretty accurate for 24 hours. So the trick is that you have to follow the weather and go where the light is. So we call it as hunting the light in Iceland. Now next, the accommodation. Now as you are moving with the weather, you are hunting the light. As you can imagine, you cannot have a fixed itinerary. So the best way to move with the weather and have a comfortable stay is with camper van. Now Iceland probably has one of the best network of camping grounds. So this is absolutely not a problem. So get a good camper and just follow the weather. Now that you are following the light on a camper van, the next question comes is what is the best time to do photography in the day? Now normally, like any other natural landscape photography, golden hour is the best time to do photograph. And that is where the summer solicit come to your rescue. Iceland has become extremely popular among tourists. So normal time, most of the places becomes extremely crowded and the only thing you will see is in front of that beautiful landscape, a lot of heads of people. Now this is not satisfactory for any serious landscape photographer. Now in the summer solicit, you normally have three hours of sunset, where the sunset starts around midnight and ends around 2 a.m. And that is fantastic for following the light and take different composition 
of landscapes with that beautiful light. Also another thing is that this landscape is really surreal and you want to be there alone or at least your closed ones and experience that like a remote location. You will not get the feel of Iceland or that beautiful landscape if you are there with 100 other people. So that's where when most of the tourists are out for their bed after their beautiful dinner, you are out doing photography of the golden light at midnight. So that basically means that you are driving all the day and sleeping all the day and photographing at night. So you should very quickly change your body clock to adjust these time differences. Next, let's talk about driving. So you are on your camper van, you are following the light, you probably already have some amazing images. Your next light or the next best destination is probably 500 kilometers away and you are driving through a completely empty road, very well maintained and the speed limit is 90. There will always be a temptation to kind of kick the accelerator a little bit harder. Please don't. The speeding fine in Iceland is horrendously high. It is not uncommon for people to pay 400, 500 euros of fine. Now you can always see that locals are passing you in high speed because they know the camera and they can recognize the police car from very far. You can't. So please behave and help yourself not to pay a hefty fine while you are traveling in Iceland. Trust me, I have been there. This temptation comes from the fact that you have done photography whole night, you are extremely tired and you really want to reach to your destination quickly and have a good rest. The best way to do that is that there are a lot of little parkings next to the road. If you are really feeling sleepy or tired, just go to one of those parkings, take half an hour or one hour of power nap and continue after that. Now that you have got used to the Icelandic photo trip type of travel, it's time to expand your horizon a little bit above the common photo locations around the ring road, the highland. The highland of Iceland, which is at the center of the island, which is basically the mountain region of Iceland, is extremely beautiful. You will not find images like this or this or this if you don't go to the highland and the road to highland is also extremely beautiful. Now one thing I should caution you, you have to be an experienced driver and you should have a good 4x4 vehicle, but it really worth every piece of effort. So next is, where are you staying? Yes, I know you are staying in your camper van, but where is your camper van? You cannot just pull out on the roadside and, and just camp and sleep. Wild camping is forbidden in Iceland, especially with a camper. So that is where the camping cart comes into the picture. Camping cart gives you access to several camping grounds. I will put the URL of the camping cart in the description below. But remember one thing, not all camping grounds are covered in the camping cart. So do some research on the Google map to understand that where are the camping grounds in front of your photo location and whether they are covered in the camping cart or not. I can't emphasize more that you should really stay as close as possible to your photo location so that you can go to the photo location several times without wasting time in the commute from the camping ground to the photo location. Now this is very common in Iceland. All this traveling and following the light is very hectic and you can get extremely tired. So it is very important that you are well rested because what can happen is that you kind of get fatigued and you skip one of the sunset and that could be the best sunset that you can have and you have a lot of regret. This happened with me. I went out, my dad was pretty tired. He decided to stay in the camper and that day it was amazing sunset and he still regrets about that. Now let's talk about photo equipment. I personally carry too much of gear but it is always good to have some redundancy in Iceland because it is not uncommon to have broken gear and the last thing you want is that you are in a beautiful photo location and your camera is not working or the tripod is broken. In general, even though I took too much of stuff, I mostly carried a 1535, 24105 and 100500 with a 1.4 and 2x teleconverter. So that basically means I had a coverage from 15 to 1000. That gave me more or less what I wanted. With that, I had a bunch of filters, 
I had my R5 and R6 with me and I also had two tripods with me. I cannot emphasize more that redundancy of photo gear is extremely important for serious landscape photographer in Iceland. Next is where to eat. We cooked most of our food ourselves. Our camper had a nice little kitchen. Most of the camping grounds have places where you can cook. The food outside is not that good. I found most of the restaurants are serving like burgers and chips and stuff. Mostly deep fried stuff which are not very healthy and they are quite slow as well. Now cooking ourselves saved us a lot of time. Sure you can go time to time to the restaurant to change up the taste and all the stuff but eating those type of food every day was not very nice for us. Next is how long do you spend in Iceland? I was there for three weeks and it was good enough. In fact I was there twice for three weeks and once for two weeks and the one that was for two weeks fell short to me. A lot of professional photographers spend months in Iceland searching for the best light. Now I can tell you even after eight weeks I am far from done with the best light in the best locations that I wanted for. Now if you do all those I can very much guarantee that you are going to get all those images that you dream about when you planned your Iceland trip. But don't get upset if you drive 500 kilometers and only get a flat sky. That is the reality of landscape photography. You have to work hard for the right light and be there at the right time at the right place. Now if you don't like that, you can always jump into a studio where you can control your light and all your elements or you can do street photography where every moment is a subject. But if you want to do the right way, the landscape photography, my friend, work hard for that. Now before ending, one small thing. I don't know why, but I get a feeling that instead of watching me talking about the Iceland photo trip, you are more concentrating on those beautiful flowers. Now if that is the case and you really like those flower fields, please go there and click and watch my previous Le Player video where I documented this amazing vista of flower field of Le Player. I hope it was helpful and if it was, please give us a thumbs up. That means a lot to us. And if you have not done it already, please subscribe and press the bell icon to get notification of our upcoming videos. Have a nice light to all of you.